Hi everybody. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a currency engraving effect in Photopea. So let's get started. Create a new project that has a DPI of 200 pixels, a height of 2000, and a width of 1600. So that's 1600, 2000, 200. Then you will import two images, a photograph and also a scroll to place your photograph inside of. Go to File, Open in Place, Confirm. Next, we need to rasterize both of our images. Go to your layers, right click, rasterize, and repeat with your other image. Next, we're going to delete the inside window of your scroll so that we can embed our portrait inside. I'm going to try using my selection tools. You can also try using the eraser tools. So selection tool options are up here on the top left. I'm going to first try the quick selection. Select the inside window. If it selects the entire image, you can then go to the top of the screen and select the minus button. We can now start removing areas that we do not want to be part of our selection. And press delete. We can also press command D or control D to deselect. Next. Take our image, go to our Move tool, and make sure Transform Controls is on, and adjust the image so that it fits inside the scroll window. If you would like to shrink your image and still maintain the aspect ratio, just hold down the Shift button as you're clicking and dragging, and confirm. Then we're going to select our photograph and we're going to turn it black and white. Select the image, go to image on the top of the screen, adjustments, desaturate. You may also need to adjust the contrast and lightness, but we are actually going to do that towards the end of the process. Now, we're going to create a brand new layer and place it on the tippy top of your layer stack. You can do that either by selecting the new layer icon on the bottom of the screen or go to layer at the top of your screen, new layer, and make sure we put it at the tippy top. Then we are going to paint this a light gray color. So go over to your left color swatches where it says hex, we're going to input D, 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 D. So that's six Ds in a row, okay? And then we're going to grab our paint bucket tool, which is hidden behind our gradient. So go to gradient, press a long press, select paint bucket, and paint this new layer. We're going to filter it to turn it into stripes. Go to the top of your screen where you see Filter, select Filter Gallery, scroll down until you see Half Tone Pattern. Then on the right, we're going to change the pattern dot to lines. We're going to change the size from 1 to 4, and we're going to increase the contrast all the way to the right to 50. So we have 4, 50, line, OK. Then we're going to turn these stripes black and white. So we're going to select Image, Adjustments, Threshold, and increase the threshold until they become black stripes, and select OK. Now once we have our black stripes, we're going to turn them into a wave pattern. Select the layer again, select Filter on the top of the screen, select Distort Wave. You can adjust the values however you wish, but I like one generator 
and then a minimum length of 186 and a maximum length of 186 as well. So that's 1, 186, 186. And also check that the type says sign. Then we are going to duplicate this layer. So right click it, duplicate layer, select your move tool, make sure transform controls is selected. And if you take your cursor around the edges, you will notice a bent arrow that will allow you to rotate your image. So we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees. Click and drag. And to get it perfectly to 90, hold down the shift key and it should snap into place and release. And we're going to confirm. Then we're going to take our anchor points on the corners and readjust the size so that it snaps to the corners and confirm. So we should have a wavy layer, another wavy layer, your scroll pattern with the window cut out, and then your black and white portrait, and a blank background beneath that. So we're going to take the top two wave layers, and we're going to change the layer styles. Right now they are set to normal. We're going to change it from normal to overlay. Repeat the same process with your second wavy layer. At this stage, we're going to resize our two images to make sure that we can see as much detail as possible in the portrait. At this stage, we can readjust the lightness and darkness and contrast of our photograph so that we can see the details a little bit clearer. So make sure our photograph is selected. Go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness, Contrast, and then readjust it as needed. Okay, so after you have readjusted the lightness and darkness, so we're going to take these four layers and merge them together. However, you do need to merge them in a very specific order. First, we're going to merge our two images together. So select the top image, right click, merge down. Then you have to select the wavy layer pattern directly above your image and merge that down next. Right click, merge down. And then finally, the last wavy layer, select it, right click, merge down. Once your layers are merged together, we're then going to zoom in and you will see how our lines are actually very jagged. So we're going to soften them up a little bit. We're going to do this using the Gaussian blur effect. Make sure that layer is selected. Click on filter. Select Blur, go to Gaussian Blur, and change it from 7.2 to 1 pixel, and say OK. And that just very gently softens up the edges. And we're going to paint our background layer a light green color. So go to your color swatches on the left, select a light green, Go to your paint bucket tool, paint your background, then we should have our black and white image on top, our green background underneath. Now we're going to take the top image and we're going to change this layer style from normal to multiply. Okay everybody, I hope you found this helpful.